Let's look at a couple last quotient rule examples. Um, so here we have a couple of rational functions which appear to be prime candidates for the quotient rule, right? We have a ratio of two polynomials. We know how to take derivatives of polynomials using the power rule and the sum rule. So let's just go ahead and apply the quotient rule top and bottom and, and see how it goes. Um, let me look at g of x first. I can certainly go ahead and apply the quotient rule. Okay. Derivative of the top. times the bottom plus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Okay. All over the bottom squared. And now we carry out those derivatives and we get our answer. So here we have 2x minus 3 times x minus 1. Then we have x squared minus 3x plus 2. Derivative of x minus 1 is just 1, right? So we leave it at that. Okay. And then all over the bottom, x minus 1 squared. Okay, and yeah, you can you can leave it like that. And I guess we'd uh, we'd be done. Um, you might feel a little silly though if you do leave it like that, because one of the things that you might notice with this is that wait that top it's quadratic, right? We know how to factor quadratics. Um, this is going to be x minus one times x minus 2, whoop, over x minus 1. Ha, huh. and okay, aside from the fact that this is undefined when x equals 1, I can cancel, I'm just left with x minus 2, and so, huh, the derivative of x minus 2 is just 1. Pretty simplistic result, right? So, so this whole thing here should equal 1 if I go ahead and simplify. So let's, let's, let's have a look and confirm that that's, that's indeed the case. Um, oh, also, ha ha ha, make sure you don't mess up. Minus sign on the quotient rule. See, even I make that mistake. You got to be careful. All right, so what do we have? We have 2x squared, right? minus 2x minus 3x minus 5x plus 3 minus x squared plus 3x minus 2 all over x minus 1 squared. Um, this is x squared minus 2x plus 1. over x minus 1 squared, and the square of x minus 1 is indeed x squared minus 2x plus 1, so this is equal to 1, as long as x is not equal to 1. So the moral of the story here is don't go ahead and blindly apply the quotient rule. Look to see if you can simplify first, right? If you can simplify, you could be making your life a whole lot easier, right? Um, it's always a good idea before you take any derivative to ask yourself if you can simplify the function because you might have an easier job of things if you simplify first before you take the derivative. Okay? Here's one more example. Um, again, we could do this one of two ways. We could apply the quotient rule directly. And let me just jump straight to the answer. Derivative of the top. So the derivative of the top is going to be 2x minus 3 times the bottom, right? Once you get the hang of the quotient rule, you can do this in one go. Times the top, or minus the top, rather. x squared minus 3x plus 1 times the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1. All over the bottom squared. And again, 
you can leave it like that if you want. If you are so inclined, you might choose to simplify. 2x squared minus 3x minus x squared plus 3x minus 1 over x squared. Um, so we have uh, x squared minus 1 over x squared for our answer. Okay, fair enough. We can do that. Um, good. What else can we do? Well, let's see. We could simplify first, right? What happens if we simplify first? Well, that x on the bottom, I can divide term by term by x, right? So I can say f of x is x squared over x minus 3x over x plus 1 over x, which is x minus 3 plus 1 over x. And therefore, using the sum and difference rules, f prime is going to be the derivative of x, which is just 1. The derivative of a constant is 0. And the derivative of 1 over x, we just saw that the derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared using the power rule for negative integers, right? This is x to the minus 1. Derivative is minus 1 times x to the minus 2, which we put in the denominator. Um, and that's the same answer as we have here because I can divide both of these terms by x squared and I get the same result. Uh, so again, um, maybe you don't want to use the quotient rule unless you have to, right? Um, quotient rule is, is, is usually going to give you a pretty messy result. Um, so if you can find a way to do things cleaner, do it that way.